Okay, so um, for today, uh, the first tutorial is a bit more about uh, processing the data and uh, you will see some more things. There will also be some uh, repetition of what we did before. So um, go to the, to the GIS training on the OpenCourseWare platform. And there, uh, there's this uh, first uh, tutorial of today about creating a groundwater level map from borehole data and the DEM. And uh, you can download the data before doing the tutorial. And it is a polygon with a, a boundary. It's an imaginary boundary because uh, there are not many boundaries in the area that I wanted to use. Uh, you could use the boundary of a municipality or of an aquifer. Here I just uh, took a random uh, extent, like you learned last time how to make a polygon of the extent. So I'm gonna download this folder because it's a shapefile and you know from good practice that the shapefile is not one file. So I'm going to uh, download the, the zip file and save it to a new folder. And I'm saving the zip file there. And then I go to that folder, tutorial three, and there's the zip file. And um, I have seven zip, that's the tool that I recommend. It's open source for zipping and unzipping. And uh, if I click right, I can choose here seven zip and I can say extract here. What's always good practice is first to open the zip file with uh, 7-zip, open archive, and then you can see if there's folders in it or files. If there's a folder in it, then you will extract it at the folder level. In this case, there are files, so we'll just extract the files in the subfolder, which will be uh, good enough. So I'm gonna extract all these files here to tutorial three, and there they are. I can remove the zip file not to get any uh, confusion. And there it is. And then I can uh, start with uh, the uh, tutorial. And we will uh, load again a data set from a geonode. We will calculate the density of boreholes within that study area. We will download the SRTM one arc second digital elevation model click and reproject it, and then we style the DEM, and we sample the elevation from the borehole locations, and we compare it with the elevation attribute which was uh, registered at the boreholes. Uh, we make corrections to the attribute table and some calculations, and then we're going to end with an interpolation of the groundwater levels at the boreholes to a raster file. I'm going to start uh, the tutorial. Um, it starts with getting uh, the data set from a geonode. It's, uh, we're going to work on the Stumpreet uh, transboundary aquifer and we get that data on the boreholes from the Orange Senku River Basin uh, GIS server, which is a geonode. And uh, here it is. And we're going to use data from uh, the area which is called Stumpreet which is a place. And there's some uh, data about uh, Stumpreet. It's a uh, transboundary, so have a look at it. So the geonode, you can always uh, look at the metadata. You see it's in uh, Botswana, Namibia, South Africa. It's a real transboundary. And we're gonna focus on the uh, Stumpreet, which is uh, approximately over there uh, to look at the, the hydrological, hydrogeological situation there. And you can check the attributes and it comes with quite some attributes that are registered with uh, this uh, layer in the geonode. Uh, as we learned, we can make a connection uh, with QGIS. So we're not gonna use the download option and get a zipped uh, shape file, but we're gonna make the connection. I'm gonna to move to uh, QGIS and follow the steps of the, the tutorial. So I'm gonna make, uh, well, first of all, again, the tip, you can put your layers panel over the browser panel. So you have the two tabs. And I'm going to start with making a new GeoNode connection to this uh, server. Click this uh, button and Go to GeoNode, make a new connection. And this uh, site is called Oracicum. And the URL, you can also copy it. So 
So there I put the URL, don't make typos, better to copy it and I'm gonna test the connection. And again, we are depending on the internet and it says the connection was successful. It's a valid Geonode instance, so that's great. So I click OK and I'm going to connect to load the layers. It will give an error, but this error doesn't affect what we do. So if you click OK, you will still get all those layers. And what I'm going to do now is look for this Stumpreet data. So I'm going to filter on Stumpreet. And there you see it. And remember that there are different web services. And if we really want to work with the vector data, we need the WFS web service. And the one that we're going to use was the one that we were looking at. That's this one. And then the WFS. So I'm going to click Add. And then uh, it will take a bit because it's a very big data set. So um, let it load. I'll do close and we'll just wait for it to, uh, to load. Many points, but we will uh, make it more uh, useful by uh, cutting it later to a specific study area. Here you see the progress. And there it's coming. Many, many points. Great that uh, these data sets are available on SDIs, so you can use them. Um, so we're going to the next step, and that is that we want to export this to uh, a local file. So you remember maybe how to do that. So click right, and I do export, save features as. And there I'm going to save this to a, a new geo package that I'm going to make for this project. I'm going to give it a new name that I call Stumpreet Data. That's the name of our geo package where we're going to store all the layers. And the name of this layer, we'll just call this one boreholes. And I also want to change the projection uh, to the projection that we use in this area, which is uh, UTM Zone 34 South on WGS84. So I click this button to set the projection. And I use the EPSG code. So three, two is for UTM, seven is for South, and then you get the zone number 34. And then don't forget to select it here so you can see that it covers our study area. I click OK. It's filled in here. And uh, that's all to save this boreholes layer with the projection in our new geo package and to add it to the map. So do OK. That will take a little bit. To convert it and there it is in a different color uh, QGIS just assigns random colors to this you can always use the styling panel to uh, style this and uh, we don't need the geonote layer uh, the online layer anymore so I'm going to remove it and you see that if I over my mouse over it, that uh, it will say that it's the layer in the geo package with the UTM coordinate. But you can also notice here in the lower right that the on the fly projection of this project is in 4326, which means latitude longitude. So I need to change this. Another way of changing it uh, is to go here and go to set CRS. And then we can say set project CRS from layer. If I click this, the project will have the same projection as this layer. So that's a nice way to change the projection of the project. And uh, let's save the project at this point. I'll just save it as a normal project. Let's call it Stumpreet. There it is. And let's uh, continue. The next step is, yeah, this is a huge data set. The attribute table is also very uh, large and will take a lot of time to display. So I'm going to make it uh, smaller and I'm gonna cut it to the boundary that was provided. So I go here to the browser panel and I go to our tutorial folder, tutorial three. I click right and I make it a favorite so I don't have to browse to this whole list. And here we see the geo package that we just created with the boreholes. And here we have the shape file that we downloaded from the tutorial uh, portal. And I simply drag it there. I can check the projection 
it has the same projection, so that is okay. So it means we can do all kinds of overlays with the borehole data. I click right, I choose zoom to layer, and uh, yeah, it covers the point. So let's uh, style it a little bit, go to the styling panel, and I change the simple fill to a simple line, make it red, and make it a bit larger. So this will be our imaginary study area. So uh, remember that you could choose there anything that is uh, the boundary of your study area. It can be the boundary of an administrative unit, a national park, or an aquifer or geological area. Uh, that's up to you. But here uh, I just have this imaginary boundary. And now we're going to clip the boreholes to this boundary and save it to our geo package. So we've done these things before. You go to vector, geoprocessing tools, and then to clip. And there I choose as an input layer, the boreholes and as an overlay layer, the stumpreet boundary. And here you can check again in the brackets if they have the same projection, that is very important. And then I'm going to save it to the geo package. So always use this to browse and then save to geo package. And I'm going to choose here tutorial three, stumpreet data, save. It will ask us how do you want to call the layer? And I'm going to call this boreholes clipped. Click OK. And now it's going to clip it. Close. And I can remove this layer. And now you see we end up with only the boreholes inside our red rectangle. Now the next step is that we're going to calculate the density of these boreholes in the study area. And therefore we use a processing algorithm. So I'm gonna close the styling panel. I go to processing to toolbox. And uh, there you can find under vector analysis, count points in polygons. We need to first, well, mathematics, if we want to know the density, it's the amount of points and it's the area um, that it's covered. And then we divide those. So let's start with counting the points in the polygon. And here for the polygon, we choose the stumpreet boundary. For the points, we choose our pore holes that are clipped to the boundary. And here you can change the name of the field of the count because what it will do, it will make a copy of your polygon. So it will create a new layer, but it will, it will copy all the attributes, but it will add an attrib attribute with the number of points. So number of boreholes. And then uh, let's uh, save it to our geo package. And because it's still the polygon and it has uh, everything that we need, let's call it the Stumpreet study area. So it will be clear from now that we will use that layer as the study area boundary, Stumpreet study area. And then I run it, close, and you see it's a copy of our rectangle. We can copy the style, paste it. And then we don't need this one anymore. And uh, let's have a look at the uh, attribute table. So click right, open attribute table. And there we see that it's one feature, that's this red polygon. And the number of boreholes in the rectangle is 64. That's great, but now we need the area of the polygon. So what I'm going to do is I'm toggling on the editing and I'm going to add a field which has the calculation of the area and I want it in square kilometers. So I'm going to open the field calculator and create a new field, which I call area, the units. So the user doesn't get confused later when they see the field and change it to decimal number, real. And you can calculate geometries from your uh, vectors 
then you go here to the geometry function and you can choose their uh, area. So for a line, you can choose dollar length and it will calculate the length uh, of a line. Here we choose dollar area, which works for polygons and it will give us the area. Here we see a preview. That's the area in the map units. Our map units are square meters. So I want to change it to square kilometers. So I'm going to divide it by uh, 1 million. Oops. And then the preview shows us the area in square kilometers. And do OK. It adds the area field. So we're almost there. We have all the ingredients to calculate now the number of boreholes per square kilometer, which is the density. So again, we do that in this uh, calculator. And the output field name will now be borehole density per square kilometer. And that will be also a decimal number. And there we are going to do the calculation with the fields and values. And we're going to create the equation number of boreholes divided by the area. And then we see the preview looks okay. We do okay. So the borehole density is uh, 0 0.2 boreholes per square kilometer. So this is just a demonstration of how you do calculations in the attribute table with these expressions. I'm going to toggle off the editing mode and I'm going to save it. Now in the next section, we are going to add a digital elevation model because we need the surface elevation also for the areas where it's not reported in the boreholes uh, data set and we need to compare those values. Close the attribute table. And we're going to use the SRTM data set. That's the shuttle radar topography mission. And the space shuttle uh, mapped the, uh, almost the whole world uh, at the one arc second spatial resolution for elevation using radar technology, radar interferometry. And uh, the spatial resolution approximately at the equator is uh, 30 meters and is freely uh, available and covers uh, the whole SADC region and much more. Um, there are different ways to download it. So you can download it from the USGS website. If you go to Earth Explorer, then you can uh, upload here the polygon. You can uh, go to data sets and you will find it uh, here under digital elevation, SRTM, the one arc second. And with this information button, you can get more information about this data always important as you have learned to check metadata and this gives us all the data uh, information on what this data is and how we could use that. So that's important, but we are going to use another way. We are going to use a plugin to download it into QGIS. So go to uh, plugins, manage and install plugins. And there I'm going to choose the SRTM downloader. That's a plugin to download the tiles of SRTM because it's a global data set which is cut into different tiles and it will download the tiles of your map canvas or in a specific study area. You can choose that. So I'm going to install it. Click close and it has added this button. So I click the SRTM downloader icon and I'm going to set the canvas extent. So it will use these boundary coordinates of the map canvas and uses it in latitude longitude. So it automatically converts it. And I'm going to define the output path where I want to save the file. So I go uh, to the tutorial three folder and I want it to be saved there. And then I click download. It will ask the username and password that's also on the Earth Explorer website. It's the same username and password. So you can click this link and uh, make a new username and password. I already have one, so I'm going to give it here. And you can choose to save the credentials so it will not ask it next time. Once you have submitted your credentials, it will start downloading. In this case, it only has one tile because I chose a small area for this tutorial. 
and then it says download completed. That's great. So here we have our SRTM one arc second elevation model. And let's put the study area on top of it. And we see that it covers much more than our study area. So you can guess what the, the next step is. So after downloading, we are going to clip and reproject the DEM to our study area. To do that, well, first of all, let's check the projection of the global data sets are often in latitude, longitude. And you see here that it's in EPSG 4326, and that is latitude, longitude, while we are working in UTM. So we want to change that. And we want to clip the DEM to the boundary of uh, the Stampreet study area. So I click right, go to export, and choose save as. And I'm going to save it directly to our geo package. So change this to geo package. And then we browse to our geo package. So I have all the data together, which is good practice. I'm going to change now the projection and now I can choose it from the list because it's the projection of this project. And I want to clip it to the boundaries of the Stumpreet study area layer. So choose that here and it fits then to the boundary coordinates of our red rectangle. I'm going to change the spatial resolution to 30 meters. Make them square. And there's one more thing because we reproject, it's important to define the no data value. I check the box and I click the plus and I'm going to add minus 999 because there's no elevation that is minus 9999. That's an out of range value. And with reprojection uh, it, and, and clipping, it might introduce some no data areas at the, at the border. And these will be assigned the value minus 9999 and the software that knows that it should not visualize those pixels. That's all, so I'm going to click OK, and it's now added to the map. You see a bit of contrast difference. That's because the standard, the default visualization of a layer is take the minimum and maximum value and scale the grayscale between those values. And because we clipped it, we have a different minimum and maximum value to scale the gray values. So I'm going to remove this layer. So we end up with our clipped digital elevation model with 30 meter resolution. Now the next step is to uh, style this one because it doesn't look nice in grayscale. Um, there are some uh, nice tricks to, uh, to style it. So I'm going to open the layer styling panel this is continuous data. So for continuous rasters, we always use the single band pseudo color. And then we can choose a color ramp. And I'm going to create a new color ramp. And I'm going to choose here a catalog CPT city. And that's a very useful catalog because you can find a lot of predefined uh, ramps, as you will see. There it is. And in all kinds of categories. So I'm going here to topography and I'm going to choose elevation. And I'm going to use this a ramp. And if you want to reuse this all the time, you can click save as standard gradient and then it will always be available in, in the list. Now I need to click classify. And now it has our pixels in uh, the colors of the color ramp. That's one thing we can do. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And that's a nice uh, trick to style DEMs. So I'm going to uncheck this one and check this one. Because it's duplicate, it will be exactly in the same style, but I'm going to use another render. Let me, for good practice, rename uh, this one. See, I didn't change uh, the layer name, I guess, in the geo package. So you should call it DEM. I, I left it as uh, default. So correct that when you go through the steps. And I'm going to create here a hill shade. So it refers to the same geo package, but just in the layers list, I give it another name so it's, uh, we can recognize what it is. And then here I can choose the hill shade and for the renderer, 
there's a hill shade renderer that automatically calculates on the fly the hill shades and we can see the shading here. But you see it's quite blocky. Therefore, we need to change this setting of resampling. And when it's zoomed in, we choose bilinear and then you see that it's smoothed. And we can also put this one on average when we are zoomed out. And that uh, improves a bit the visualization. And when we blend this with the DEM, so I go back to the DEM in the layer styling panel and I change the blending mode here to multiply. And then we have the hill shades with the DEM and that gives a better visualization effect. Now this area is not very spectacular in real leaf, but if you try to do that in other areas, you will see that that gives a very nice uh, effect. That was the styling of the DEM. Then uh, it's time to, to look more at the data. And what we are going to do is uh, sample the DEM values at the locations of the boreholes. And we did that before in another tutorial. We need a plugin for that, that is called the point sampling tool. Here it is. Install the plugin, click close, and it adds this button. So I'm going to add it. And what I now need is I want a copy of this boreholes clipped, but then with the elevation values from the DEM added to it. So I'm going to select here all the fields from the original layer, the boreholes clipped layer. I use shift to select them all. And I want the DEM. So I keep control pressed and I click on DEM. So it's uh, also blue. So we can see here that every field that I want in the output is now selected in blue. And uh, I'm going to create an output layer. So it will make a, a copy, go to tutorial three. I, I'm not saving it in the geo package because this tool will not add a layer, but will overwrite it. So I'm going to choose a shape file and I'm going to call this one boreholes Z. So I will recognize that this is the one with uh, Z values. And I click save. Before clicking OK, I go to the fields tab and there you can rename the fields if needed. And I'm going to do that for the DEM value. I'm simply going to call this one Z underscore DEM. So I know that's elevation from the DEM. And when I click OK now, it processes the data set. And uh, yeah, we can now work with the sample data set. So that's the next step. We are going to look at the attribute table of this new layer. I'm going to remove this one. And click right, open the attribute table. 64 uh, records, as we have counted before. And we see different fields in the attribute table. And for us, what is important for uh, this uh, tutorial is that we have the elevation that is mapped at the boreholes, but you see that there's a lot of missing data. These minus 9999 are missing data values. So some of these boreholes have missing records for the elevation at the borehole mapped uh, before. Uh, we have some other useful fields. We have our elevation from the uh, SRTM DEM here added, uh, which we just did with the point sampling tool. And there is a depth in meters, which also has a lot of missing data, but it also has some with data that we will later uh, progress with. So first I want to compare the elevation from SRTM with the reported elevation at the wells to see if they uh, have a bit of a relation with each other. So I'm going to select first the no data values because I don't want them in a, a scatter plot that we are going to create. So I click this button, select features using an expression. And I want all the elevation features. So I go here to fields and values, all the elevation values that are less than zero, I want them to be selected. So here, 
elevation in double quotes that refers to the field name and then less than zero. And then I click select features and I click close and I see that there are 10 features selected. We see them here in bright yellow also on the map. And those are the ones that have missing data for the elevation. Um, here's the elevation field. But for our scatter plot that we're going to make with a plugin, we need to invert the selection. We want to make the scatter plot for everything except those missing values. So I'm going to use this button to invert the selection. So now 54 records are selected. Those are the other ones. And I can uh, close the attribute table for now. They remain selected. And what we're going to do now is to uh, make a scatter plot and we're going to use the data plotly plugin, which is a very nice plugin to make scatter plots or other types of graphs um, from your attribute tables. So go to plugins, manage and install plugins. And I choose here data plotly. There it is. And I'm going to install the plugin. Plugin is successfully installed. I click close. And I'm just going to remove the layer styling panel. Because when I click this new button here, it will open the data plotly panel. Make it a bit bigger so we see the whole panel. And here you can choose the type of plot that you want. And I'm choosing here the scatter plot. And I'm choosing the layer here, boreholes set, that's important. And what we need to set is the correct X field and the Y field. But first, I should not forget that I only want to use the selected features from the attribute table. So I check this box. And I want on the X axis the elevation. And on the Y, I want the Z from the DEM that we have uh, sampled. And uh, I keep the styling as a default. You can play around with that. And I go to this tab to configure some more things. I don't need a legend. I'm going to change the title to borehole versus DEM elevation. Always important to um, define these labels on the axis with the units. So good practice, borehole elevation in meters. And this one, we call it DEM elevation in meters. And that's basically all the settings that we uh, need now. And then I can click this button here to create the plot. And there we see our scatter plot and we see that they are uh, related. Uh, there are some outliers, but generally it gives us a good correlation. So we might in this imaginary case conclude, okay, if we have those missing data uh, in the borehole uh, data set for elevation, we can uh, replace it with the elevation values of SRTM as a substitute. You could also go back to the field with an altimeter and then uh, measure them the elevation again. But uh, here I'm going to show you how, uh, how this will work to replace those no data values. So that's the next step. I'm going to uh, close this uh, data plotly panel and I go back to the attribute table. There it is. And I'm going to deselect all. I don't want this selection anymore because I'm going to work on this attribute table now. And I toggle to editing mode. And what you see here in the editing mode on the, uh, just above your field names is something that you can read as an equation. So this is the output field equals and then this button to set the equation or you can type the equation here. And um, I'm going to make an equation with a condition. So I'm going to um, choose here elevation and what I want is a condition that if the elevation is no data, so uh, less than zero, then give me the values from the DEM. Otherwise, use the values that were recorded at elevation. So I go to this button to build the expression. And 
here under conditions, conditionals, you can have uh, different functions to make conditions. We are going to use the if function. And you can see the syntax here on the right. Uh, if, I make it a bit bigger. If the condition is true, do something that is here, and then a comma, what to do if it is false. So that's the structure. If I double click, I can start building the expression. expression. It is written here. And first I'm going to add the elevation field. So I go to fields and values and double click on elevation. So it will be here in double quotes. Make it a bit bigger so you can read it better. So if the elevation is less than zero, then that's a comma. It reminds me here about the syntax. When it's true, I want the values from the DEM. So I go here to ZDEM and I double click. And then I write a comma and I say what it has to do when it's false. So when it's not less than zero, I want it to add the original elevation values back. So I double click and then I closed this function with the bracket and I see that the preview is okay. So to remind you, it's a condition if elevation pixels are less than zero, if that is true, then write for those fields the elevation from the DEM. If that is not true, use the elevation values that were already there. So I click OK, and now the equation is written here. And then you verify if the equation is well. So elevation equals if elevation, etc. And only when that is the case, you click Update All. And now we will not find any no data in the elevation field. So we have now every elevation, every feature, every borehole now has an elevation feature uh, with uh, data. So that's great. I'm going to toggle it off and save these results in this attribute table. Now we need to uh, calculate the groundwater level in the boreholes because we have here the depth in meters, not for all the um, boreholes, but for some of them. But we want to have the uh, absolute elevation. So I'm first going to uh, filter out those no data values. So I go here to select features using an expression, as we learned before, fields and values, depth in meters. And I'm going to say, if that is less than zero, so all those minus 999 uh, values, then uh, I want to select them. So I choose select features, and it will select a lot of them. We're gonna lose a lot of these uh, points in this case. Um, and I'm going to simply remove those. So I go to toggle to editing mode, use the trash bin icon, and we are left over now with 11, point, 11 points that we are going to use for our further analysis. So um, I'm going to save uh, this by toggling off the editing and click save. And then I can close this and we see here uh, those points. Now the next step is that we need to go back to the attribute table because I now want to subtract the, the depth from the elevation of the surface to have the absolute elevation uh, of those uh, boreholes, which is the groundwater level. So I toggle the editing mode and I'm going to the field calculator and there I create a new field, which I call groundwater level meters. It's a decimal, a real, keep the other defaults. And I go here to fields and values, double click on elevation, and I do minus, and then the depth in meters. And the preview looks okay. Make it a bit bigger so you can see it. And this will give us then the groundwater level in absolute height. Uh, so I click OK. And what we have now here is the groundwater levels for these 11 points. I toggle off the editing, 
and click Save. Now the next step is that I want to interpolate these groundwater levels to a raster. We close the attribute table and we're going to use some uh, tools to, to interpolate. The first uh, interpolation method that I'm going to demonstrate is the inverse distance uh, weighing method. And uh, there are different ways to calculate it, but I'm going to use a processing tool. The advantage is that it will calculate it for the full extent instead of using the function that is in here. Here you also have inverse distance to a power, but that will restrict the calculation to the convex hull or boundary of those uh, borehole points. So I'm going here to interpolation and I find here IDW interpolation. I double click. I want my borehole set layer as an input and I want there the groundwater level in meters as the layer and then I need to use the plus button to add it here to this list. I keep the default quadratic uh, weight, uh, quadratic function, exponential function there uh, for the, the decay function of the weights. And I can choose here the extent and that's the advantage of using, using this tool instead of the other one. So I want to interpolate it to the boundary of the study area, so click OK. And then it will use those coordinates. And then I'm going to save it here, I don't have the option to save it to a geo package. So later, if you want it in the geo package, you can drag it from the browser panel. Here, I save it as a TIFF file and call it um, groundwater level IDW because later I'm going to show you another method and it will be a geo TIFF. And then I run, oh, sorry, I forget one more thing to set the pixel size. And I want it at the 30 meter resolution, not 0 0.1. That would be really uh, too many pixels for this uh, very low amount of points. So I'll put it at 30 meters in this case, and then I run it. And there we see uh, a smooth interpolation. That's what the IDW does. Uh, it's always good to style this with a color ramp. So I'm going to open the layer styling panel. Remember for continuous data, we use single band pseudo color. And I'm going to use a ramp. And uh, go now to all color ramps. And I would like to have something like, if it's very deep, then it's not so good, so that's red. And if it's closer to the surface, it's blue. So I want something from, from red to blue. Uh, so I could use this one, or I could use, uh, this one's in the tutorial, or I could use red uh, via yellow to blue. So let's use this one in this case. And uh, there we have it. So this is one uh, interpolator. Um, but there is, uh, yeah, it looks maybe nice and smooth, but it's very much biased to the points. And here we have very sparse distribution of points. Let me put the points on top of it. And uh, could also uh, label those points with uh, the values. Go to single labels. And I choose then the field of the groundwater depth. And, uh, sorry, that's the last field here. And then, uh, then you can see it just uh, quick and dirty uh, labeling. You can change a lot of these settings. Um, so you see that we only have few points and the distribution is not ideal for this interpolator. And I can make that even more visual what, what works, what, what happens here uh, by visualizing this in 3D. So I go here to view, new 3D map view. And that will open the 3D map view. And what I'm going to do is change some settings here. We need to indicate that we use a DEM and the DEM that we use in this case is the groundwater level IDW. And I'm going to exaggerate it because you've seen that the elevation values are very little. So I go to 10 and then I click okay. And then I can see it in 3D. And what you see is typical for these kind of uh, uh, interpolators is that it will create uh, bumps and valleys around the points. 
So another interpolator might be better than using this one, just to visualize the result. IDW works very well when we have many points uh, a bit regularly spread over our study area. So I'm going to show another interpolator. That's the Thiessen polygons. And for that purpose, I can use there the tool from this raster menu, go to analysis, and I choose grid nearest neighbor. That's the Thiessen polygon. It will simply assign to each pixel the value of the nearest uh, point. So I choose here the boreholes Z. And it's important that here under advanced, you choose the Z field, which will be groundwater level in meters. And uh, that's all. I go here to save the interpolated raster to groundwater level. And I call this one Thiessen. I click save. And you see that it uses a GDAL tool. I click run. There it is. Now it's limited to the boundaries of our points. So that's a, a result of this uh, algorithm. And I'm going to style it to compare it. Single band pseudo color, the yellow to blue, uh, blue to, sorry, red to blue. And uh, so it's at the same uh, color scale as the other one. And yeah, normally when I then discuss what, which interpolator is, uh, is better, uh, students normally go for the smooth one, but you've seen that those, this one also has some strange uh, effects if we look at it in 3D. And if we go to Thiessen, it simply says that the groundwater elevation is the same as the closest uh, point. So that's uh, what happens with this interpolator. So that's basically what I wanted to show you with uh, this tutorial.